What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to a very special edition of PlayStation Generation as we dive into the review for Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. Shout out to PlayStation Canada for sending us over the review quote. I'm joined for the first time in a little bit by the man himself, Mr. Court Lalonde. What's up, Court? Hey, buddy. Yeah, I think the last time we, we did one of these was Astrobot. Was Astrobot. It was like yes. a whole two months ago, and I missed yeah, you, and it's nice to see your ago. face again. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm a real person. Hey, I'm just happy I don't have pneumonia today. So like, yeah, today's the first day I woke up and I was like, hey, I don't feel like grim death. That's usually like a good thing to wake up and feel, yeah. you know, I usually like to feel grim death around 2 p.m. Not yeah. not right when I wake up. I, I, I on my birthday, I went to bed at 8 45, nine o'clock. There you go. So proud of you. Yeah. And of course, hanging out with us today because we need him as always. We never don't need him, but we need him all the time. Is Mr. Steve Vivari was himself. What's up, Steve? Uh, hey, I'm I'm it's great to be here. I'm also, you know, not feeling like grim death right now, but hell yeah, day's still young. The day's you still young, and you anything can happen in the next little while. Yeah. We're recording we're recording this early on a Monday, so it's just like you know, if there was ever a time for grim death, it would be this one. But as I said, folks, we're gonna be talking about Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered uh, once again. PlayStation Canada sent over over the codes. Uh, we've been playing it. We have thoughts. We have opinions. Uh, and and let's let's just get into the thick of it, folks. With you know, PlayStation Canada. And PlayStation at large is talking a lot about the enhancements that they've made to the game, largely graphical stuff, uh, reworking the lighting, reworking the environment, uh, redoing lip syncing, and redoing a bunch of motion capture. Uh, Three hours kind of, of motion capture, like 10, ah. 10 hours, yeah, 10 yeah. hours of it. Um, and uh, yeah, coming with it with the price tag of ten dollars US, fifteen dollars Canadian. Without further ado, folks, I, I want to hear kind of give me your top level thoughts first before we get into the nitty gritty of the graphical stuff and all the rest of it. Corey, let's start with you. How are, you, how are um, you feeling about the remaster? Well, I I thought that that ten dollars with math should have been thirteen ninety nine. Uh, it's not. It's fifteen dollars. Has uh, it always I, been though? No. So I I before we get into my thought, this was one of my my pinpoints because it was brought to my attention this morning. So I went down and went through my transactions of uh, Ghost of Tsushima and other games that we've done the the upgrade path. Mm -hmm. So the very first time we ever did this, it was ten dollars Canadian. Then it was thirteen ninety nine, and now it's fifteen dollars on the bot on the on on the button, which is very interesting because the money um, U.S. to Canadian hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. But I think this is the new pricing strategy when they brought in the the PS five and now with the PS five Pro, where they've gone with a rounder number almost mm -hmm. than the what actually should be U.S. to Canadian. Just it's a solid fifty. Like they're they're yeah. putting it up just to offset, just in case the Canadian dollar goes down, which is mm -hmm. very interesting. But um. Top level, I can't put the game down. Um, I'm at, so I am a Horizon fanboy. I, I really enjoy the series. I really, really like the story. Um, I think Hor this Horizon has a better story than Forbidden West um, by a long margin. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm. It's interesting because we haven't played this for so long, so it actually feels a little bit fresh, especially the way the animation style has gone and the way the game looks. Mm -hmm. um, I went back and looked at video for the, the PS4 version, and I was like, wow, this is actually a huge graphical uptick, and I didn't think it was going to be. Like, when we got the Uncharted's and we got some of those, I didn't think they did such a big jump. Mm -hmm. But Nixie's has done such a phenomenal job. And I, I have to say they, they're they the number one. If you're PlayStation, you're going to get someone to do these type of deals. They have to be the ones doing it yep. because they did a great job with Spider-Man. Uh, they did a great job with Ratchet and Clank. But you couldn't – that game already looked beautiful. They're, I thought Horizon was one of the most beautiful games on the PS4 besides Ghost of Tsushima. It wasn't – it didn't look that great now. I look back at some of the videos on YouTube and such, and you can see it, especially in the NPCs and the talking. I know, Matt, you have – we were speaking about your pinpoints with regards to the NPCs. I'm now seeing it after you brought it to my attention. Hmm. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. But I still think that the NPCs look phenomenal. I think Aloy is a character. They've just made it look more next-gen. Mm -hmm. I think the environments look great as you're going through the brush and you're fighting the enemies. It almost feels like the game moves a little faster. Mm-hmm which I wasn't expecting. I didn't realize the PS4 version. The last time I touched it was horizon for uh, the frozen wilds. And I remember going back to do the DLC because it was so long after the game. And I felt like the game was really slow and clumsy. And I was like, wow, I'm having a hard time getting back into the combat. I was very worried about that. Jumping in to um, horizon again, thinking I was going to have a hard time. I didn't have one at all. I was able to jump in. I had no issues. 
I didn't find it to be slow. Mm -hmm. Um, my save carried over, but my trophies didn't pop. Um, uh, mm -hmm. the combat feels great, but I have my issues. Um, Okay, let's pause. Let's pause there. Let's pause on the issues. Let's 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 kind of go around the horn, and then we'll kind of drill down on because I I have a couple of things as well. Uh, but Steve, where are you at top level on on the remaster? Yeah, no, I'm I'm overall pretty positive. I I like Cord. I'm a, I'm a big Horizon fan. I've always been a big Horizon fan. It's just very unfortunate that Gorilla just can't seem to uh, look at a calendar and and understand <laughs> when 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 it's competing with other games. And much like this one, it's just doing it again. So I feel like. Not really has anything to do with the game per se, but maybe Gorilla just needs needs someone overseeing to just be like, hey, maybe don't release this alongside Zelda or Elden Ring or Dragon. Dragon Age. I don't know. <laughs> it would have been great last month. Like perfect. Or maybe not before there's another Lego version of this game. I like the summer. I, the, sum I, I really the summer. Would, the summer would have. The summer would have felt really great for this game. It would. It would have. But that being said. The content itself is really rock solid, always kind of has been. This game has like a phenomenal bone. So as soon as they started announcing the remaster, uh, I was like, well, this is just going to elevate what's already, in my opinion, a great experience, a very tentpole flagship marquee PlayStation experience. Now, that all being said, when, when I saw the, the trailer, I was like, okay, well, this is just what Horizon looks like in my brain. This is exactly like how it felt and looked when I first played one and when it first came out, but then yeah, no to, much to course point getting into it and kind of seeing exactly what Nixus has done and elevated the visual quality, just the frame rates, just it, it brought it up to parody to uh, uh, forbidden West, which I, I still say is the most gorgeous game I've ever played uh, yep. bar none. So I, I, I think much like the last of us part one remaster. This is exactly what they're kind of doing to mm -hmm. horizon, just bringing it to uh, a parallel point. Uh, I think in terms of like a, an entry way, this is a great way for people to now jump in, have it not feel super, not even super, but just a, a little bit outdated, a little more refined now. And then, Hey, if you like this, if you like uh, zero Dawn, jump into forbidden West, get into all that content. And then just from there, go on with whatever's next, whether it be that MMO or uh, a third mainline entry. I think, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Cause I do think this is the definitive version of this game yeah. comparing it to the last of us part one, I think it's pretty apt because this does feel more than just like a skin thrown on the existing game. And like you were saying, Steve, this is what I thought zero dawn had looked like. And then when I go back and look at video, I'm like, Oh no, like that game still looks gorgeous. So, you know, don't get me, don't get me wrong by any stretch of the imagination, but this is what I remembered it looking like. And it, it, it looks genuinely fantastic. The lighting reworks, a lot of uh, the character models, Aloy looks incredible, like just by herself. I am not a horizon fanboy. I, I like the series, but it has never really completely grabbed me. There's something missing there for me. And I still think, that that exists like this isn't a reworking of the experience on you know like you know down to its dna if you were mid on horizon zero dawn before this isn't going to change your mind but for fans of it or for people who are looking to get into the experience for the first time this is easily the way to go it, it, it it's breathtaking it's gorgeous it, it just looks so good every everything that you do in the game and sometimes on you know i'd pause to pull up photo mode i'd be like this like this is incredible like it looks amazing. So they, there's a lot of work that's gone on, got into this. I think to varying levels, um, we, we can start kind of talking about uh, the, the, the negative aspects a little bit here. Cause I think for me, the lip syncing isn't entirely there. I think it's some characters like Aloy uh, look really good, but a lot of the NPCs, in my opinion, the lower half of their face animates much more than the top half of their face and that that visual disparity once i noticed it never really went away and it, it was really really evident with um when you're in mother's heart uh after the after the, the proving and there's that elder that's talking to you i was like what the hell is going on with your face lady i don't like i don't like the way that you look you look like a snake with no lips i don't i, I didn't like it 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 not everybody looks that bad and a lot of characters do look largely good but i don't think the top and bottom half of the faces entirely align. Um, but I think that's the kind of biggest just drawback for me based on the graphics stuff. Cause everything else I think looks 
fantastic, but that one thing has been bothering me depending on which character you run into, because I do think it's varying levels of of, of good that that lip-syncing looks. Uh, Court, where, where are you out on the stuff that bugs you? Well, that came up once you brought it to my attention. I do notice it. Oddly enough, um, the one thing I love about this is I'm able to, when Frozen Wilds came out, it's actually that part of the, the, the story is halfway through the actual story of the game. And for some reason, they brought out a DLC that you have to go back and you're kind of like going back into the game, mm-hmm. even though... I now have gotten to the point I'm level 23 and I'm able to go do the frozen wilds now without actually finishing the game, which I'm very excited. Right. When I mm. hopped into the frozen wilds, that issue with regards to NPCs doesn't happen. So okay. maybe because of when the mocap was done on those and uh, those people that the, the actors and actresses that did that, maybe it was different. Maybe at the beginning of the game, because I know you, they did, they literally put out a post today saying how much they went back to do all a lot of the mocaps. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they definitely did for Aloy as a character because yeah. I don't notice that issue. Um, but I do notice it when we're doing some side quest or some errand quest when you're talking to those NPCs. I'm just like, I'm a little confused. My only little gripes are there was quality of life improvements they did with Forbidden West that are not in Horizon Zero Dawn yep. that I'm actually shocked because when they redid uh, The Last of Us Part 1, they put a lot of the quality of life that they had in Last of Us Part 2 into Part mm-hmm. 1. The fact that I can't do auto pickup is driving me absolutely bonkers because Same. when they added that in Forbidden West, it was like, this is the smartest thing you've ever done because there's so many things to pick up and resources and so, far, so on and so forth. And then also the fact that my mount disappears like every two seconds so quickly, I'm just like, come on. It doesn't happen in Forbidden West. They don't have it. Once you've overridden... Um, a robot, I guess that's what we're gonna call them because they don't want to call dinosaurs. Don't get they're machines, Corey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're they're definitely dinosaurs and cows and bulls, but whatever. That's real fanboy of you, the big, yeah, the big, yeah. The big real three. fanboy of you to know. Come on, they're the real, game is the matrix, machines. but still, it's still it's literally just taking the matrix and putting kills on putting it into one thing. Anyways, the fact that we go into the machine and we're doesn't matter. I don't want to get into the whole like, economy <laughs> of the game. That? Well, because the world, think, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I get very annoyed for the fact that I have to, every single time I start up and I'm at a, a, a save point, I have to go and override a machine again, yep. even yep. though I shouldn't have had to. Like, right before I saved, I had that mount. I'm like, come on. Like, that's very frustrating. And then the fact that in Forbidden West, they you were able to fast travel without mm-hmm. using the little pouches, and they brought the pouch back. I'm like, why? why? And they only charge you, like, two, two shards for it. But, like, well... What's the point? Like, just get rid of it and just let me fast travel. Once I've unlocked the one well, lost the the uh, the fast travel point, I should just be able to do it because mm-hmm. I don't want to have to run, especially with the fact that you're not letting me have my mount and I have to go find it every single time. I'm just fast traveling everywhere now because it's just annoying the living daylights out of me. That is the I can't believe they didn't put it in the game part. I'm mm-hmm. actually shocked because they did such a good job in Forbidden West and giving us these quality of life things that we're so used to in modern gaming and it wasn't around at, you know, when they started doing horizon zero dawn, they developed that game at the end of the PS3 life cycle and it came out in the PS4. Right. So I'm actually very surprised because to me, these little things are so easy to put in the game. Yeah. Especially with the pickup, the auto pickup is one that's driving me nuts too, because the animation to pick things up is just long enough and you have to do it so frequently that it gets annoying. It's not quick enough that, I don't notice it. I'm like, if all I have to do is press the button and it doesn't really disrupt the flow of movement, sure. But it's it's just long enough that every time it gets frustrating. Um, fast travel, I completely agree with you. I think the only other thing for me that was missing, and I know this would be a much bigger undertaking than it would be not, but in the light of Forbidden West, the melee combat just feels clunkier again. Like I, I so like clunky, yeah. the the fluidity of of the melee combat in Forbidden West, and I think that if somebody comes into Zero Dawn for the first time with this, it's not going to be an issue. But for any returning player who's come off of Forbidden West and is now coming back to Zero Dawn Remastered, I do miss like the fluidity of the combat. I wouldn't have needed all of the like super moves and stuff that you can do in Forbidden West, but I would have liked a little bit more of a melee rework. Um, but again, I think that's that's a bigger undertaking than auto pickup, for example. But I, I, it is something that has bugged me coming back to it in the light of Forbidden West. But Steve, what about you? No, I, I'm kind of right there with you both, really. And, and something I brought up before was bringing 
is how they brought Zero Dawn up to Forbidden West in terms of parody, in terms of the, the graphics and, and yeah. the impressive visuals and stuff like that. But I do genuinely uh, agree with you guys that playing uh, Zero Dawn Remaster uh, or Remake after uh, Forbidden West comes out of the detriment only because there's so many things lacking and it feels like a more outdated experience versus Forbidden West because that one felt like very cutting edge. It felt like the sequel where they refined all the systems. The, the melee in that game is just fast, fluid. It's kinetic. It feels great, especially for how much you're using it. In this one, it feels really clunky, clunky, slow. And then, yeah, it's just the quality of life things that I keep coming back to where it's like, this game looks great. I think in terms of the content, the story, what you're doing from a moment to moment basis, still really solid and everything. But then it's just being slowed down by stuff that was introduced, you know, eight eight years ago um, in some change. And I just kind of wish that a little more went into refining or, and smoothing out those those aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. versus, you know, putting so much resources into mocap and uh, improving the performances and everything. Because, yeah, I agree. I think everything is so elevating and contemporary in this game, except for the things that, I guess, matter the most to me as someone who's playing it. But that being said, and you kind of touched on it, Matt, but for people who are coming into this as their first rip into horizon, they're not going to notice. They're not going to even, mm -hmm. this isn't even going to raise a red flag or anything. This is going to be a very good entry point, but it's for people who are now, you know, coming off of forbidden West and saying, well, maybe I want to play another horizon. Maybe I want to just, you know, buy some time until the third game comes out. I'm not really down for a Lego version. I'm going to go for this really realistic, hyper uh, realistic game. And then you get into it and you're like, well, it just doesn't feel as good as what mm -hmm. I just played a couple of years ago. I agree. And I think I think the one saving grace for this, because I feel like my opinion on this may have been harsher if it was carrying a full price tag. And I think using Until Dawn as a reference point here, mm -hmm. given that it just came out and was almost a full price experience with no upgrade path, I was a little bit harsher on because, yeah, the, again, the visual work that went into that game is, is significant but they're charging almost full price for it. It's 80 Canadian dollars. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, I think they've done this the right way with the $10-$15 upgrade path for existing users. I think that that is a, a, a solid amount to pay for what you're getting here. I think that's, I think that's fair. Yeah, I, think I think that think given so. the amount of visual work that's been done, I think a lot of it here... Paying fifteen bucks Canadian to get to get access to it, I, I, think, I think is fine. Um... Because if if this was a full eighty or ninety dollar Canadian price title, I I'd be I'd be speaking about this much differently. Because well, again, then it's a question of quality. But I do think they've made the right call here uh, in terms of price. Because I do think that it, it makes a difference for players entering this game. Um, so I, I do want to shut them out for that because I, I think I think this is great. Is Horizon Zero Dawn still in PlayStation Plus? No, they removed it after they announced this. Yeah, that, 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 to I was me, gonna, I was kind of like, uh, that's a little icky. Do that? I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Because like, if you had PlayStation Plus, you could just pay the $15 to have the upgraded version. Though Mind I will you, say, at least been on sale like a million, million times. Like, I you know I bought it because I bought a physical version of this game originally. And I remember about a year ago, it was like $15 yeah. to buy the game. So I was like, you know what? Just. Just because there was rumors at the time that they were getting the new, so I bought it for fifteen bucks. I also do want to say that they literally gave Zero Dawn away for free multiple oh, yeah. times. Yeah, like with that days of play and stuff. So it's like, and I I do want to say because I I think a different conversation would have been again if they locked out players who got it from free from days of play and had to charge in full price. They didn't do that thankfully because I think that would have just been an arbitrary confusion. Um, so I I, I do agree it's crappy that it's not on plus anymore but at the very least like a lot of the playstation population i imagine has this game in some way shape or form whether they've, if they've played it or not um but they yeah did, let's... i mean you guys should have listened to people like me for years now of saying this is a great game so you missed out now you gotta pay the money suckers yeah. drop those dollar bills yeah. for, for 15 bucks that is val there's value there like mm -hmm. i can't stop playing this game i'm i'm liking it so much like call of duty came out um, I'm a big fan. Of, I played a little bit of multiplayer. I haven't touched the campaign because I want to finish horizon yeah. first That's because great. I can't, I don't have the time in my life. I know a lot of people do, but I don't, uh, on the weekends, I'm at the rink all the time. I don't have the time to play two campaigns of a game. In fact, I stopped playing NHL 
because I <gasps> yeah exactly that's because good. I want to be able to play some Call of Duty multiplayer. So that's my hey, I've got fifteen, you know, twenty five minutes to kill. I'm gonna go play some Call of Duty. But if I've got an hour to sit down, I'm playing Horizon right now. Like I, mm-hmm. it feels like a different game, even though it's the same game. Like I know where I'm going and I have almost like a guide in my head. I'm like, I know where I can go to get everything. But at the same time, I'm feeling a different experience and I'm mm-hmm. liking it. It's a lot like when I played the last of us part one, when they brought that mm-hmm. back out, I was like, this feels great. When they brought the last of us part two out, I was like, it feels the same. I mm-hmm. don't need to play this. And all my trophies popped. And I'm like, all right, forget it. I'm good. And that brings us to the trophies don't pop. Mm -hmm. When you turn this game on, the trophies don't pop. So if you think you're going to, you know, for the gamer grams out there, you're listening. (laughs) You're going to go in there and think you're paying $15 for a platinum. That ain't going to happen this time. So Mm -hmm. you're going to have to play the game. So I would suggest if you've already finished the game to start on new game plus, if you haven't done that already, because you're going to get that extra trophy for the trophy hunters out there. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, Cord kind of, you know, wrapped up his his closing thoughts nicely there. I think that was a good way to kind of end end out the show. But Steve, hit me with your closing thoughts. Any 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 last things you want to mention about remastered? Yeah, I mean, there's not too much to really say about this. I think it's a mm-hmm. great experience for people who have never played Horizon, and shame on every single one of you uh, for not listening to me uh, once again. But uh, for yeah, I think this is a really great example of why Nix is such an asset for PlayStation. It, it mm-hmm. happens time and time again. Like uh, remaster, they're they're such a great port house that every time that they do this, I'm like. This was such a I'm great a- yeah, acquisition for PlayStation. These guys are masters of their craft, and they work very, very well as a support studio for whoever they're working with. And their yeah. games aren't buggy. Like, oh, my God. They, they Never. do such a good wow. job. Well, yeah, on, on PC. Yeah. On PC, yeah. The core, no, yeah but PC no, no. If you're, if, like, if, you're, if you're a real gamer and you're playing on your PlayStation 5, you're enjoying some real great yeah. games. I and, agree with you, Steve. Those PC nerds. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't feel that there's an inherent rush to, to run out and get this game. But if you are thinking about, well, I think this is the best scenario. You play Lego uh, Horizon Adventures. That's your first little taste of Horizon. You're thinking, ooh, now I want the big boy version of this. I want I want to get like real sink my teeth into this franchise you play this then you go to forbidden west and you get like Mm -hmm. the full uh experience start to finish but yeah i I, again i just feel like they're they miss a couple opportunities to really just refine the gameplay to make this feel like exactly what forbidden west is which in my opinion is still the best playstation 5 game in terms of quality in terms of uh just the way it feels especially for this franchise but other than that i mean everything's still solid i think this game is still a great quality story Uh, i love the the narrative of this game i love the performances of this game so yeah I, i i i don't really have anything inherently bad to say about it aside from the fact that it just doesn't feel as as refined as a 2024 game should but other than that great stuff and i hope this incentivizes way more people to jump into this franchise yeah i think you both kind of hit the nail on the head if you've ever played it this is a great way to play it if you have played it and are looking to for a reason to come back you won't you won't you can't go wrong with 15 bucks just just be aware that it isn't doesn't feel as good as forbidden west does and that's just by you know this was the the original and then that's that's going to play out the way that it has um uh, but uh, i just want to say one other thing uh just before we start uh closing out and it's not really specific to this game but it's more specific to just horizon in general and i mm-hmm. wonder if we're just reaching a point where oversaturation is just going to really hurt this franchise even more because mm-hmm. I, I again i don't i really don't understand why playstation would release this and then lego horizons in a couple two weeks, weeks later now. It, mm-hmm. it, it marketing it just doesn't really make sense and i fear that people will just either get you know uh, uh paralysis from decision of do i want the lego game do i want this one and end up not even playing either or do they go for one experience uh, like, and they think that's the lesser experience because they didn't go for the other i it just to me it doesn't really make sense and i just wonder why they're rushing both of these out without even like a horizon tv show coming out like it to me yeah. i'm just kind of like why why are we doing this why are we putting this much emphasis on horizon right now before the holidays i don't disagree i like i said i, I still feel like this if, if it could have been ready would have been a better summer game there wasn't a lot going on this summer there's plenty of opportunities for people to hop into this and then a few months later be like oh now lego horizons is coming out um but and and while i do think that they're different 
kind of core markets that you're are, that you're kind of marketing to across these two games. It's just like you said, a lot of Horizon in a very short amount of time. It's not even a month between them. Is this game PS5 Pro enhanced? Maybe I'll check. Because that's probably so. uh, if it is, then that makes way more sense why they brought it out now. Just to be like, well, it's another game. But you haven't, yeah. I, I'm, I'm. No, no, no. You know the way marketing right. works, no, right? So it's like, right. hey, here's yeah. a game that'll look beautiful. Like I said to Matt, um, I am so on like the, I've, I've, I've almost got the coin now. So I'm like, do I get one now? Like uh, uh, that. To, to be totally honest, that Alan Wake two trailer sold me on the PS5 Pro. That was the best piece of marketing for the PS5 Pro that I've seen yet. It was pretty good. It was pretty convincing. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for checking out uh, the, the the episode. We, we really appreciate it. Let us know in the comments. Are you going to be picking up Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered? Before we do go, though, Court, where can people see and hear you more on this worldwide interwebs? You really can't, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can, you can find me on... Uh... You can find me on Twitter because I'm never going to change it uh, at Court Lalonde. You can find me at Court Lalonde on all social medias. And every now and then I'll pop up on a review either on Console Creatures or uh, on the PlayStation generation here. I, I still am doing written reviews for Bobby every now and then. So uh, I'll be around and maybe in the, you know, the Christmas time you'll see me again. We'll see. Who knows? He'll be he'll be wrapped up underneath everyone's Christmas tree. And Steve, my dude, where can people find you? Oh my goodness! Uh, I hope on, on PlayStation Generations more often. That'll be fun. Love hanging out with you guys. But um, you can find me across the internet at Asvigvari. Just keep up with me there, wherever. I'm around. Go check out Court and Steve in all the places that you can or can't find them. Sometimes just turn a corner and take a look. Maybe you'll see one of them peering around. Uh, you can find myself over on Twitter at Madden Square Silver Soul and at Blue Sky in similar fashion. Uh, and of course, you can find us over here at Console Creatures each and every week on PlayStation Generation. And you can find some of my other written work at butwhythe.net. That brings us to the end of the show, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Be well. Peace. Bye. Why, you feel